Okay, in this video, we are going to have a look at piezo push button switches and how we can interface them to a microcontroller. Now, sometimes they're called vinyl proof switches because they're one piece construction, they're waterproof, the electronics is potted inside. We have two wires coming out of it, a black and red. So, this one's polarity sensitive, some are not. It has an o ring, so we can mount this on a stainless steel faceplate. It'll be very strong. If anybody tries to hit it or, or punch it with their hand, they won't uh, damage it. So we're going to hook this up to a microcontroller and I'll demonstrate how this vandal proof switch works. Okay, I have my vandal proof switch connected up to GPIO pin 8 on the SCAM3 board. Now this switch is different from the one you saw at the beginning of the video. This is a non-polarity sensitive vandal proof switch. You can see the two wires coming out of it are the same color. So we could hook it up to the SCAM3 board GPIO in any direction. And on pin 4, GPIO pin 4 of the SCAM3 board, I have an LED and beeper, and when I press on the push button, it's going to toggle the LED and beeper, and I can do that. So we have a little toggle function. So when I press normally on the push button, I get a negative going pulse out of the switch, about 100 milliseconds in length. We can see that on the scope. And it's pretty clean. So you can see it's about 100 milliseconds. Now if I press harder, if I do a harder press, I'll get a longer negative going pulse, about 170 milliseconds. So that negative going pulse is fed into GPIO pin 8 and the code running on the SCAM3 board is monitoring it for a negative going pulse and when it sees that it will toggle pin 4, GPIO pin 4, which will toggle the LED and the beeper. Okay, here's a schematic diagram of the circuit that I built on my breadboard. And you can see the SCAM3 board and we have the piezo switch connected from pin 8 to ground. I'm just substituting a, a typical normal push button. Pin 4, we have the LED with a current limiting resistor, 470 ohms, and a common ground. And that's it. That's all you need. So when you press on the vanity proof switch, we'll get a ne negative going pulse into pin 8, and the code will see that, and then toggle pin 4. So here's, here's pin 8 on the microcontroller, and here's our vanity proof switch. So inside the microcontroller, we have a pull-up to 3.3 volts, and when the switch shorts the ground, We'll get a neg negative going pulse into the microcontroller, uh, 100 milliseconds. So that's that's our internal internal pull up that we we do in code. We'll actually enable that in code, so we have a pull up resistor, so we can get our negative going pulse into the microcontroller. Okay, here's the code running on the SCAM3 board, and it's written in Flashforth. So the program is called Toggle. So the first thing we do, we assign pin 8 GPIO as an input with a pull up. That's where we're going to connect our vandal proof switch. Pin 4 GPIO is configured as an output that's connected to the LED and we clear it so the LED is off. Then we go into a begin until loop. This is a continuous loop until we hit any key on the keyboard and we'll come out of this loop. So the code is going to sit there and wait for pin 8 to go low when we press the button. So this is what this does. It's sitting there waiting for uh, pin 8 to go low. As soon as it goes low it's going to toggle pin 4. So it's going to toggle the LED and it's going to wait 20 milliseconds. I've got a little bit of contact debounce time there. Then it's going to wait for pin 8 to go high. And after it goes high, it's going to wait 20 milliseconds. And it's going to loop back up to the beginning again. So I put in these two uh, delays here. Now my vandal proof switches are pretty clean, but I've seen some that are dirty. So I put some debouncing time in there. So it's up to you. You could tell if yours needs that. You could play around with, the, with that timing. So that's it. That's toggle. You just run that and I will toggle the LED when you press the button on the vinyl proof switch. Okay, so that was my tutorial on how to interface a piezo vinyl proof switch to a microcontroller. So we could control a load, we could toggle a load very easily. Now you have to remember a normal switch, like one of these, when you press and you hold the push button, we have continuity between the two pins and then when you release it op you have an open circuit. Now on this type it's just a pulse. So if you press and hold you're not going to get continuity between these two wires. As soon as you press it we're going to get just a pulse and the microcontroller has to decide what to do with that pulse. Now these vandal proof switches they're fairly expensive. I got these from DigiKey and they're about a hundred dollars. But I see them online out of China for about ten dollars. Now I don't know how good they are. I haven't tried any of them. But they sure work well if you have a project where you need to, uh, your switch to be waterproof 
and to be vandal proof you're going to be in a uh, you have a product that's going to be out in the public so it's a very handy switch to have and it works very well